Sometimes, encouraging literacy with our children comes naturally. We look at pictures, read books, talk about what words mean and their proper pronunciation. Some of us even taught our children some basic signs so they could communicate before they could speak. However, for most of us, teaching our children to speak the language of math does not come as naturally. And for some of us, having math discussions with our children can be intimidating. I'm Amanda Hasty, mother and teacher, and today we're going to be discussing math talk. What is it? Why it's important? And how you, even if you don't like math, can learn to speak the language of math with your child. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more great educational content and tips. The National Council of Teachers of Mathematics defines math talk as the ways of representing, thinking, talking, and agreeing and disagreeing that teachers and students use to engage in mathematical tasks. Simply put, math talk is meaningful conversations about math. Here's an example. My three-year-old daughter and I go to the grocery store. We walk in and she says, Oh, apples, yummy, can we get some? I tell her, of course we can. How many should we get? 79, she says. That's a lot of apples. How many people do we have in our family? I ask her. She thinks. I wait. I help her a little. There's you and mommy. Daddy, she says. Yes, Daddy. And Uncle Keith? How many people is that? We count together. One, two, three, four. Four people in our family. Maybe we should get four apples, one for each of us. We go over to the apples, then she counts them herself and bags them. That's math talk. It's taking the time to think and problem solve with your child. Just like shared reading experiences encourages language and literacy development, shared math discussions encourages your child to think about math. Early number-related talk, counting, comparing, sequencing, sparks an interest in math and decreases math anxiety. A randomized study was done with 587 first graders. They were all given bedtime stories read to them by their parents every single night for the whole school year. About half of them were read math-related stories, and then after reading the stories, their parents discussed a math problem in relation to the story that they had just read. The other group just read literature stories. At the end of the school year, this is what they found. The intervention, short numerical story problems, significantly increased children's math achievement across the school year compared to the reading or the control group, especially for children whose parents are habitually anxious about math. Brief, High-quality parent-child interactions about math at home can help break that intergenerational cycle of low math achievement. Are you anxious about math? Maybe it's not your favorite subject. Well, the best thing you can do to help your child decrease their math anxiety and to increase their math achievement is to have short math-related interactions with your child. Now don't get overwhelmed. Math talk is meant to be brief. It's not a worksheet or a project that's going to be graded. It's just a discussion of math concepts, things that you encounter already every single day. Here's some examples. Read math picture books. Just like we heard about in the study with the first graders, Laura Overdeck has some great math picture books called Bedtime Math. 
At the end of each of her stories, she has a math-related discussion question. And what's great? There's a question for wee ones, little ones, and big kids, ready for all ages of children. Look for opportunities to count. How many books did we read? Let's count how many steps it takes to get across the driveway. Count as you push your child on the swing. Or you can even take it a step further. I see two geese in the pond, and there's three geese on the bank. Let's count how many geese are there in all. Solve problems together. The grocery store is a great place for this, just like I told you with my daughter trying to figure out how many apples we're going to buy. You already do so many math-related problems when you're at the grocery store. How much of something do you need to buy? How many of them? Are you going to split it into groups? How much is it going to cost? What's the better buy? Do I want to give exact change when I pay? Just include your child on all of these math-related problems. And don't be too concerned if you think it's over their head. You can still verbally talk about what you're trying to figure out and talk verbally through your process. Even though they might not be old enough to count change back, if they hear you every time you're at the grocery store verbally counting the change back, they're going to catch on and they will learn from that. Use a calendar. Have one posted and available for your child to look at. They can see the numbers in sequential order. You can talk about the days of the week and the months of the year. You can count with them to count down until a special holiday or an event. You can even take it a step further and have a graph posted and graph the weather each day. Talk about measurements with your child. This includes time, distance, weight, volume, length, etc. Talk about how much time it takes to get somewhere. Do you think it's going to take longer to get to grandpa's house or does it take longer to get to the library? How tall is this book? Do you think it will fit on the bookshelf? You can talk about the differences between the weight your child is at one well child visit versus the weight that they are now. There's so many things you can do with cooking when you're doing measurements. Let your child measure it out and talk about the difference in size between half a teaspoon and a whole teaspoon. Intentionally use directional words. Behind, on top of, below, beside. Where's the dog? Is he behind the box? Do you think he would fit inside the box? Why or why not? Make mathematical observations with your child. You can notice numbers on license plates or on street signs. You can notice what shapes different things are. You can also pay attention to what the high or low temperatures are for the day. Then compare these items. What's more? What's bigger? What's higher? These are just a few examples of ways you can talk math with your child. Remember, the goal of math talk is not to teach or to tell your child something, but to have a mathematical discussion. Ask your child open-ended questions, and then ask follow-up questions to keep that discussion going. At first, these discussions might feel a little forced, but in time, these discussions will become a natural part of your family's language. And if you have any great examples of ways to bring math talk into your home, write about them in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more great educational content and tips.